Hi, Rocky boy. Hi, legend boy. You guys love being here with me when I'm filming, don't ya? Mm. Iced sticky bun latte, pumpkin foam from Overflow, a local coffee shop. Mm. Go from hello, Ishmar. Our dear Heavenly Father, please guide me. Please forgive me of my sins. I repent. I am not a professional here. I don't know what I'm doing. Please guide me. I haven't thought about what today's episode is going to be about. Please send your Holy Spirit to touch me and touch every single person who is watching or listening in. Tell me the words to say and let everything point back to you and bless everyone who is watching. I love you so much in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello and welcome to the Save Souls podcast, the podcast where I talk about whatever the heck I want, and whatever God puts on my heart. I have no idea what I'm doing today. I am in a different spot. I'm in the homeschool room. If you didn't know, I homeschool my two children, Ava, who is six, and Stella, who is five. Stella just turned five, so she's kind of doing pre-K stuff. I was thinking about doing kindergarten this year, but I think she's still a little too young. And Ava is in first grade, so that has been amazing it's such a blessing to be able to teach my kids and not only that but we have so much free time they don't have to sit at a desk for eight hours a day and they're learning so much and for those of you that are like how are they interacting with other kids and social skills and this and that they hang out with so many friends and a lot of people out here homeschool so it works out. They probably hang out with more kids than they would if they were in public school. I just came back from watching my friend's babies. She has four kids and two of them are foster kids and they're the sweetest little souls. I woke up this morning, went straight there, which is why I'm looking so dolled up today in my messy bun, no makeup, but I do have my flutter habit lashes and that helps a lot. <laughs> If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put a link in my bio. I've been using them for years and they're basically DIY lash extensions at home. And I only have like three clusters on. I just, I love them so much and they save so much money. I think with my discount code, it comes out to like $4 a set and each set lasts you like five days up to like a week. So I love waking up with some lashes for days like this where I do not make time to get ready. I was actually watching her kids yesterday morning too. She had to go drop her car off in another city. And then as soon as I got home, I was watching my other friend's kids. So yesterday, just from morning till pretty much dinner time, and then we had soccer practice for Ava, it was just revolved around kids. And you can really learn a lot from kids, you guys. They are so smart. Some things that Ava and Stella say, I'm like, Okay, that had to be God. That had to be the Holy Spirit because how do you know that? Most of you guys know Chris got a vasectomy and we are so happy with our two babies who we get to spoil. But I do love pouring into other people's families and I love watching friends' kids, just loving on them and then sending them back. <laughs> I used to be the two-year-old's teacher at church when I was younger, when I was like a teenager. And there would be like 20 to 30 kids in each class and it was just two-year-olds half of them would need their diaper changed half of them were potty trained and i've just always loved babies and being around children so i feel like god really put that on my heart it's different having more kids of your own because i get questions all the time why aren't you guys having more kids if you love kids why don't you have more kids i always knew i wanted more than one child chris and i kind of just decided to have two I knew once we had Ava, we were going to have at least one more. Literally the week that I stopped breastfeeding and I dried up my milk on Ava's first birthday week, I got pregnant with Stella, which is crazy because it took eight months to get pregnant, eight months of trying to get pregnant with Ava. So I thought once I dried my milk up, it would take another eight months. I don't know. But no, literally the same week we got pregnant, which I was totally cool with. I was, I knew that once I dried my milk up, I could get pregnant any day and we did and I love this age gap I love them being so close they can be a little crazy sometimes they can fight they, they're sisters at the end of the day but they have each other and they're best friends I know as they get older they will appreciate having each other more and more 
and always having someone to talk to when mom and dad are busy or working or whatever they always have somebody which was kind of the goal um when we had Ava we're like yeah we're definitely going to give you a brother or sister. It can be so tiring as a mom. I'm in my mom girl era, apparently. I made this sweater. I don't think it's on the website anymore. If it is, I'll try to find it and link it in the bio. I sold like two and then I took it down. One day I'm like, yeah, I'm going to sell on Etsy. The next day I'm like, oh, I'm going to have a print on demand shop. And then I'm like, no, I'm going to start a podcast. Duh. But if you want this sweater, let me know and I will put it in my bio just for you. It is hard when they're young. But I feel like as we get older, as we get older, as we get wiser, as the kids get older, we're going to have so much more free time. And I'm excited for that. But I also am going to miss them being little like I already do. I feel like I just had them yesterday. How are they already five and six? Lord, what should I talk about? So I don't know about you, but... Chris and I got married pretty young and we decided that we wanted kids pretty young too. In my family, there's some trauma. There's some generational curses. There is a lot that I have not shared on social media because mm, we're not going down that hole yet. I will probably touch on things here and there as we get deeper into some podcasts, but that is one thing that I knew that I wanted to do when I had my own kids was break generational curses. If you don't know what a generational curse is, it's pretty simple. It is a curse that is passed down from generations. I'll give you a couple examples, some maybe more lighthearted ones. My mom's side of the family is from Costa Rica. My mom moved here to the U.S. when she was 18, along with my grandparents and their kids, my mom's siblings. And in Costa Rica, a lot of Hispanic culture actually if you're Hispanic, you know there there can be a lot of, um, <laughs> oh, how do I put this? There can be a lot of gossip. There can be a lot of traits that you don't want to pass down to your kids. The way that you discipline your kids, the way that you treat your kids, respect can mean something to you and mean something totally different to another person. I will never tell my kids that they owe me something just because I had them. I brought them here to this earth. God called them to be here. They didn't ask to be here. I'm responsible for my kids. My kids are not responsible for me. I will never look at them and say, you owe me something because I had you. Look at what I do for you. Look what I provide for you. I provide a roof over your head and food in your belly. So you owe me the rest of your life. Anything I say and I tell you to do, you need to do it because you are my kid. There's a difference between respect and discipline and using your children just because they're your children. Plain and simple, my kids are growing up different than I grew up. I love my mom. I love my grandparents. I love their grandparents. I love all my family. I love my dad. I love my stepdad and my grandpa who was like my dad. I love everyone in my family, but that does not mean I'm going to mirror them just because they're my parents or my family. I don't agree with a lot of things that people do including family and that is okay. I know I am the best mom for my kids because I am trying to do what the Bible tells me to do and how the Bible tells me to raise my children. I believe my kids should respect me and I believe they should not talk to me some type of way, sassy, attitude, disrespect. But there are so many times where I am crying in my bedroom on my knees, praying to God, God, show me what to do. Show me what to say in this moment because I don't have all the answers and I'm not just going to do what my mom did. I'm not just going to do what my dad says to do. God, how do you want me to parent? Tell me what to say to my kids right now because I don't have the words. I don't have the energy. I am exhausted. I am so angry right now. I feel so much rage. I'm so disrespected. I've told them this a million times. Why are they not listening to me? But God, I give this to you because I do not want to repeat things that traumatize me and will traumatize my children and maybe their children and their children if they don't put the stop to the generational curse. If I don't put my foot down and stop this generational curse right now, who will? I've got some daddy issues. I didn't grow up with my biological father there. I didn't see my mom and my dad together. I didn't see them kiss each other and hug each other and love each other. And when I went to bed, look at me getting emotional. My mom raised me. My mom was a single mom and <laughs> she did her absolute best and I love her for that. She was the mom and the dad. She 
did everything she could to provide for us. She would count pennies to put gas in the car. And I know I blocked a lot of things out and I believe that God does that so that you don't remember bad times and you only remember good times. I was a happy kid, but I wasn't stupid. I knew what was going on. Just like my kids, even at, even when they were three and four, even when they were two and three, they knew what was going on. They, they heard Chris and I fighting and Chris and I were babies ourselves <laughs> when we had them. We're still learning and growing. We're learning how to be married. We're learning how to be parents and we're growing individually and together, which is a really hard thing to do, but it was so worth it and we're a lot smarter now and wiser now and we don't make the same mistakes and all of that has to do with God because God is the reason we are still together. God is the reason my kids are so freaking smart and kind and respectful it is not because of me or how i grew up it is because every single day i've asked god to help me and the proof is in the pudding every time we go out we get compliments on how good our kids are and everyone who's met our kids are like oh my gosh they're so sweet and i'm just like it's not me it's not chris it is not us i mean yeah god has used us to raise them into these beautiful human beings but like I said it is all God and his guidance and what he has shown me throughout this journey of motherhood but I got daddy issues I'm not gonna lie and you guys it was to the point where I would see how amazing of a father Chris was to the girls like when they were younger and I would see how he was with them and I would just my heart would break and it's not because of them it's because of my own issues I was so happy for Ava and I was so happy for Stella and I'm like you guys are so blessed but a part of my heart was breaking because I never had that God healed that part of me now when I see Chris with the girls all I feel is joy and bliss and I'm just so thankful and I'm like thank you God thank you thank you thank you that we push through and we are able to be mom and dad and at the end of the day two parents are tucking in these children and they see us loving each other i love when my kids are giggling and grossed out because chris and i are kissing and they're like ew it means that he's there and i'm there chris was not raised by his biological mother or father he had a good childhood because his grandparents were there and raising him but who knows the issues that he deals with deep down how he responds to certain situations how I respond to certain situations, how we treat our kids. If you saw how we grew up, which is very similar to a lot of people's stories, I know a lot of people deal with same issues, you would not look at us and be like, yep, those are going to be some great parents. But God, he put us together. He gave us these two blessings. And now we're freaking killing it. I'm not even going to lie. We are killing it because of him. We see a generational curse in the Ten Commandments. Commandment number two, those in the community who worshipped idols would see God's punishment on their families as long as they lived. A quote from the Bible, to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But those who choose to love God and keep his commandments would receive God's blessing to a thousand generations. In the New Testament, Jesus curses a fig tree to show his disciples a parable of fruitlessness. Peter calls down curses when he's attempting to deny knowing Jesus. Those who preach a different gospel are under God's curse. Cursed is also taken in the New Testament as a synonym for being eternally lost. Our ancestors do leave us baggage and it is our job to throw those bags away and say we're never dealing with that again because I'm the one that's going to put my foot down so that the generations to come don't have to deal with that. Ooh, Holy Spirit, you better speak. God's grace is greater than any generational curse. Jesus dying on the cross is greater than any generational curse. And the power that we receive through God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit is more than enough to cover it all. It is scary becoming a mom and becoming a dad. It is scary being responsible for other human life. But whatever you are scared of, it is more scared of Jesus. So keep running. You guys, I had no idea what the heck I was going to talk about today. This is just what is happening. This is just what God put on my heart. This is why I say I'm here to talk about whatever the heck I want and whatever good God puts on my heart because how are we here? Like, I don't know how we got here. Keep running to Jesus and cast all your cares, all your worries at his feet. 
and trust him that he's going to deliver you of whatever you are dealing with so that your kids, your beautiful children that God has trusted you with don't have to struggle with everything you've struggled with. They're going to have such a great life because you are taking charge. All that weight that you're carrying that's on your shoulders, God literally tells us that we can give it to him. So although it may feel heavy right now, just know that the battle is already won. The enemy has been defeated. God is just waiting for you to reach your hand up and give him your everything and cast all your worries at his feet. If you're not reaching your hands up and praising him and giving him everything, then you should be on your knees praying and asking for him no matter which way you do it. He hears you, he sees you, and he knows your heart. And even when you don't have the words, even if you don't know what to say or what to pray, he knows your heart. Just sit there in his peace and ask the Holy Spirit to fall upon you and your family and he will show up. You guys, I love you so much. I'm going to end this podcast right here. Speaking of children, my kids are getting a little antsy out there. They've been doing so good letting me film this podcast, but I need to go feed them lunch. Thank you so much for watching here on YouTube or maybe you're listening in on Spotify. If you enjoyed this podcast, please give it a share. Maybe you can share um, one where I'm not looking so ratchet. No, I'm just kidding. I don't care how I show up as long as I show up for him and for you guys. So I love you guys so much. Comment down below if you enjoyed this podcast. Let me know what blessed you and what touched you. I hope you guys have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.